guys, today I have 10 tips for breastfeeding. These are just very general tips all across the board. Um, if you're interested in other breastfeeding related videos, I will leave a link down below to my playlist because there's a couple other videos on there that are kind of helpful, I think. So hopefully you will like to check that out down below and get a little bit more information if you are a new mommy, a pregnant mommy, thinking about breastfeeding, any of that kind of stuff. Um, I love breastfeeding. I'm currently nursing our almost seven month old baby and I nursed our two year old until he was like 15 or 16 months old. So um, yeah, I've done this uh, twice now in the beginning stages and I know the beginning stages are super duper hard and sucky and you just need some tips. Sometimes you just need a little bit of extra information. So let's hop right in. Tip number one, which is super hard, but very necessary is to not stress out. Don't stress about how much milk you're getting. Don't stress about people watching you. Don't stress about, you know, going out in public. Just try to relax as much as possible because having all those stress hormones is going to negatively impact your milk and send you on a downward spiral. Find the comfiest spot in your house and declare that the official nursing station. Don't let your husband sit there. Don't let the dog sit there. This is your spot. This is where you nurse the baby. All of your stuff will be there, you know, like your chapstick and your water bottle and your nipple cream. All the stuff you need will be right next to you and don't let anybody else sit there. That's your spot. Number two, tell your family they're only allowed to say positive things. If you really want to breastfeed, you don't need your husband sitting over there saying, Oh, why don't you just give him a bottle of formula? Oh, why don't you just do that? Why don't you just pump? You don't need that. You need him to be supportive and say, honey, you can do it. What can I get for you? How can I help you? Do you need me to support the baby while you get the latch correct? You know, like, don't let your family, it's not like they're trying to sabotage you, but it's not helping you reach your breastfeeding goals if they're not saying helpful things. I know that sounds really mean, but it's true. <laughs> Number three, if you have a clogged milk duct, immediately start working on it. If you're already back to work and you notice during a pumping session that you have a duct, you have, you know, you can feel the knot in there, you need to go home sick because you need to focus all of your time and energy on trying to get that cleared before it turns into mastitis. Take a hot shower, massage your breast, use a warm compress, you know, just take a wet washcloth, put it in the microwave for a few seconds and hold it on there while you nurse, while you pump. But remember that nursing, your nursing baby is going to be the best at fixing it. I just, I have experience both ways. With my first son, I had several clogged ducts in the beginning and I tried to pump them out and it always took forever. But when I started realizing that he was able to get them out better than the pump, that's like the only way to do it. If you have a clogged duct, get your baby on the boob as much as possible. They are the best at pulling it out. Number four, ask your pediatrician if you can nurse in front of them or the nurses. Ask if you can get like a weight check where they weigh the baby, then you nurse them, then they weigh them again to see how much milk they're getting. It will help put your mind at ease. Um, being able to nurse in front of somebody who knows how to properly latch a baby and how nursing properly works will help you get a better understanding or just get that extra bit of confidence where they're like, oh, you're doing great. It looks awesome. The latch is perfect. It will just help reassure you that you're doing things correctly. Or if you're having struggles, they'll be able to help you out a little bit. I can't say enough how awesome it was to go to the pediatrician on our very first baby appointment with our first son and have the nurse come in and make me show her how we're latching and how things are going because that made me feel so much better because I really didn't know what was going on and at my, with my first son um, at the hospital, the lactation consultants were not very helpful at all. They, that was just a bad experience all around. But with my second son, oh, thankfully things were a lot better. The, the lactation consultant who saw me in the hospital with our second son was amazing. <laughs> But the first time around, I really didn't know what I was doing and I wasn't getting enough help. But when we went to the pediatrician, they were able to help me out. Number five, if the latch isn't working, Google it. You may be able to come across like diagrams or even physical videos of somebody, you know, latching a baby. And I know it's weird, you know, staring at somebody else's boob and whatnot, but it will really help you understand how to get a good latch. I struggled with latch with both of my boys and it was 
terrible. It was a pain in the butt. It was really, really hard and made things really stressful. But being able to see like diagrams and, and watching things online, that just really helped me be able to, you know, like when you read, you know, read how to latch, it's just not as good as watching it, physically seeing it happen. Number six, as a last resort, try a nipple shield. I know there are a lot of conflicting thoughts about nipple shields, but I will just say in my personal experience, if I didn't have a nipple shield with my first son, Calvin, I'm not sure we would have succeeded at breastfeeding. Like I said in the beginning, we nursed for like 15, 16 months. Um, I seriously do not think that would have happened if it hadn't been for the nipple shield that we used for the first seven weeks. He just could not latch and I didn't know enough about how to try to get him to latch. So I don't know if it was on my part or his part, but the nipple shield allowed us to actually physically nurse from the boob and that, I will say, saved us. I didn't really even know about such a thing in the hospital. Nobody at the hospital ever mentioned anything about a nipple shield. It's when we went to that pediatrician appointment, that's when I kind of learned about a nipple shield. I had kind of been Googling it the night before, but when we went in, the lactation, or just the nurse there said, why don't you try a nipple shield? And I was like, okay, let's do this. Number seven, newborns can be super duper tired. Like you have to wake them and force them to eat. Seriously, <laughs> it sounds nice, babies sleep all the time, but in reality, you have to make them drink their milk in order for them to grow. If they are very jaundice, they will definitely need to be woken up. Both of my boys had jaundice. My first son had it a lot worse than my second son. Um, and you have to like tickle them. You like hold them up like, you know, baby Simba, <laughs> like undress them, make them uncomfortable in order to wake them up so that they nurse. It's crazy. I mean, listen to your pediatrician. If if baby's gaining a bunch of weight and they're sleeping however they want to sleep, that's totally cool. But I'm just saying with both of my boys, they both needed to be woken up to nurse and like tickled and talked to. You're like pretty much yelling at the baby to make them stay awake on the boob. Number eight, eating healthy will help your milk supply. I know you've heard it a million times. You're supposed to be eating healthy while you're pregnant, but sometimes you have different food aversions or cravings. But while you're breastfeeding, eating healthy is going to be the best thing you can do for your supply. Oats, nuts, seeds, the like densely packed nutrient dense foods. Those are going to help your milk supply. Definitely. I would totally recommend, you know, a big old bowl of oatmeal with nuts and seeds and, and like, you know, just good, food, <laughs> you know, good whole food to have to help your milk supply. I definitely noticed with my first son on days I had oatmeal for breakfast, I would pump a little bit more than I would normally. I don't notice it so much this time around because I pretty much have oatmeal every day for breakfast, but so far we're doing really good. I never, uh, so far, you know, I'm almost seven months into this. I haven't had any days where I'm not pumping enough, not like that I'm worried about how much milk I'm pumping. Eating oatmeal for breakfast every day is awesome it's it's really good for your milk supply if you don't like the texture of oatmeal it's like gross and squishy and that freaks you out try making a granola or buying some granola you know you've got the oats in there but it's crunchy like a cereal instead of being squishy like an oatmeal so maybe that's a little bit helpful but definitely watch what you're eating just try to be as healthy as possible number nine learn how to nurse side lying. Like if you're laying in bed and baby's laying in bed right next to you and you guys are nursing together, it will make you feel so much better. Especially in the nighttime nursing, like three o'clock in the morning and you got a nurse. To not have to like sit up in this chair and like nurse baby for 30 minutes, then you like, it's hard to fall back asleep. But when you're like laying down and you're nursing baby, it's just so much more relaxing. When baby pops off the boob, you go put baby away and you're able to go back to sleep so much easier. At least that's been my experience. It took me and my first son a long time to figure out how to side lie nurse. But once we figured it out, it was awesome. It was the best. <laughs> I don't know why it was so difficult in the beginning because it's been super easy this time around with baby number two. And number 10 is about your nipples, because you your nipples are gonna be an issue. <laughs> kind of let your nipples dry out or like air out, not dry out, air out for a little bit after you're done nursing. If they're just super duper sore and just not 
being good, apply some cream or even apply some of your own breast milk to help heal things and just let your boobs be out in the open for a few minutes to let that like cream or milk or whatever just kind of like dry there. Just let your boobs air out for a bit so that even, you know, just your shirt or your bra or whatever, just that little bit of fabric touching your nipples can be a bit too much. Just let them kind of air out. <laughs> I know it sounds really weird. You're just going to be sitting around with like your boobies totally hanging out, but it will make them feel so much better to not immediately have, you know, a shirt touching them all the time or a baby's mouth on them all the time. Just let them have a break. So that's it. Those are my 10 tips for breastfeeding overall. If you guys have any more questions, please leave them down below. If there are any other breastfeeding video suggestions you guys have, leave those down below as well. Like I said, I'll leave a link to the playlist that has a couple other helpful videos, I think. So I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. Please give it a thumbs up if you did like it, and I'll talk to you next time. Bye!